podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. The elders tell tales of the time before the Great War, a time where our ancestors traveled great distances between the stars. The elders have tales of countless planets, rich with natural resources and unfathomable wealth. We have rebuilt our war-torn homes, unified our people, and mastered our natural strengths. We are all ready, and if the tales are true, we must explore the same path as our ancestors. Our ancestors mastered flight long ago. Our elders tell tales of avians flying higher than the skies. Can it be possible that other flocks migrate above the blue? We, the bird species, must take our stellar leap. Our brilliant scientists predict that our world will soon come to an end. They have studied the stars and believe that there is a high probability we can identify many planets that support life. It is only logical that we expand our vast empire into space. We, the dinosaur species, must ensure our survival by taking our stellar leap. We are driven to explore and experience every new land. We have traversed every inch of our world, but there must be more adventures out there. Our heritage dictates that we venture further than we've ever gone before, and those shiny spots in the night sky are our next target. We, the explorer species, must heed the call and take our stellar leap. The clans have all agreed spreading our people across the galaxy is a utmost priority. We have honed our skills as much as we can on our home planet and require new challenges that can only be found in the stars above. With hope in our hearts, we, the mammoth species, must take our stellar leap. Our intelligence division reports every day of new signals heard from the stars. These must be the others from the Elders' legends. Our mining division has finally finished the testing of their equipment, and reports indicate riches untold ready for harvest. The High Command has arrived at the consensus we are ready to travel beyond our home. It's time to take a stellar leap. Cool beans. Does that guys sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me either. But this is the game of uh, the story of Stellar Leap, a new game on Kickstarter. And tonight we have. We're lucky enough to have on Nick Kopp, who is a, are you a uh, co-creator in it? Yeah, so I'm a a co-creator. My wife, Carla Kopp, uh, designed the game, and I get the development credit in the uh, rule book. And I do a lot of the behind the scenes, all the stuff basically that she doesn't want to do. So think about running Kickstarter behind the scenes and doing uh, the manufacturing coordination all that kind of stuff and so it's it's me and my wife uh, as a weird giraffe games that we've designed this game called stellar leap it's we're so excited about it it's awesome so stellar leap is a space exploration dice game for one to four players with worker placement variable player powers hidden objectives and game-changing events that has the feel of a 4x game in about an hour stellar leap supports multiple play styles based on who is playing Stellar Leap can be semi-cooperative, really aggressive, or somewhere in between, and you can win by playing in any of those ways. Stellar Leap has a custom game length. Change the playtime easily by increasing or decreasing the number of events to complete the game. Stellar Leap makes player choice matter. Choose your player power and hidden trait to help support your specific strategy. Designate which planets and asteroids to place where they'll benefit you the most and choose when the game ends by either causing events to trigger or avoiding them. And for an extremely limited time, you can get an exclusive planet created by the ridiculously talented Nolan Nasser, who did the art for games New Bedford, Exoplanets, and The Groves, exclusively if you back the Kickstarter. Uh, Stellar Leap is out now on Kickstarter until October 19th. Uh, Even after that, you'll be able to find it at stellar-leap.com. Cool. So you told us a little bit about it, uh, about how to play and whatnot. But how did you guys come up with the with the whole idea? Yeah. So we always wanted to do a dice game. Uh, so we took the mechanics that have you played Machi Koro or uh, any of those games where you roll dice like Settlers of Catan and you get resources. Have you played one of those games? 
uh, not Settlers of Catana, even though I know that's a, uh, one of the gateway games, it sounds like. I'm kind of new to the whole industry, but I have played Machi Coral. Me and my daughter love that one. Yeah, so we, we took that idea of rolling dice to get things uh, out of Machi Coro, and we said, hey, let's try to make this a little bit better. Uh, so it's not just random dice rolling. Uh, so we took that idea and we said, what if you had uh, like some sort of power where you can manipulate the dice on your turn so you can make your things uh, score resources? And then what if this power was some sort of things like the force? And so it, it kind of fell into this space-based theme that we wanted to go with this game. And then we said, what if we expanded it to a 4X kind of game where you're exploring a galaxy and you're exploiting the planets for resources and you're expanding your empire and you're um, attacking some, some of your opponents, just a little bit of attacking. So we wanted to create this massively cool galaxy that brings this experience of Machi Koro dice rolling and the 4X play for six hours kind of game into a game that's only about an hour. So you can get all of that experience uh, in during lunch or at at night, rather than having to set up a huge game so you can play the, ent- the entire uh, weekend or something like that. There you go, cool. And you talk about dice manipulation. I think I see something on your Kickstarter page where you're where somebody's turning the dice around. What, can you explain that mechanic to us a little bit? Yeah. So, so at the beginning of your turn, you roll two dice. And so if you think about it, if you visualize out there, uh, think about in Machi Koro where you've got cards with numbers on them. And if you roll the dice and those numbers are on the dice, they activate and you get some sort of benefit from that. So if you could think about that in terms of a space-based theme. So if you've got a, a row of cards... Uh, and then there's planets underneath these rows. So each each card has the number one through six. And if you roll the dice, uh, the planets under those uh, cards one through six, whichever the dice faces that come up and the sum of the dice, they generate resources. Now, that would be awesome. But we said, well, what if if you had some sort of way that you can manipulate that so your planets come up, the ones that you want, and so each, uh, at the beginning of the game, we pass out uh, a player dice power. And these are variable powers, so maybe one faction can change the dice, uh, add one to one die, or, and subtract one to the other, keeping the sum of the dice the same. And another, plan, or another faction can only add one, uh, one to one dice or two to one dice. So they have variable powers, and you get to choose one at the beginning of the game. And yours is different than everybody else's around the table. Okay, cool. And then that helps you, um, because I see you down there where you talked about uh, you have the different planets underneath the um, number of dice or whatnot. So you're trying to collect planets, or what exactly is the goal of the game? Yeah, so the game is, it's a very Star Trek kind of feel to the game. Uh, So you start off, your civilization is left on its home planet after this great war, and we're finally ready to go explore the galaxy uh, to see what else is out there. And so the other players are different species that are on their own home planets out in this galaxy. And so there's different actions that you can perform throughout the game. One of the actions is to discover some planets. So what you do is you draw a planet from a card and you put it down on the table somewhere and it becomes this new world that you can go to and collect resources from. So as players are are discovering new planets, drawing cards, and they're building this galaxy of cards on this table, And then you can create some new population. So you use those resources to create uh, more population. You use the resources to spread out to the other planets. And you can use the resources to do missions that give you rewards in terms of victory points and and rewards in terms of resources. And so each action in the game gives you some sort of victory points. Um, And you also have a hidden trait that's indicative of your species and your species is trying to do a certain action in the game maybe it's I want to discover the most amount of planets so if I discover the most planets I get the an extra bonus points at the end of the game where I want to do the most attacks or if I want to uh, uh, spread out as as much as possible there's a whole bunch of different hidden traits that and everything leads up to these victory points that are counted at the end of the game cool, cool being so um 
And are you both discovering your own solar system or do you share the same solar system? Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, essentially you share the same uh, galaxy as the other uh, players in the game. So you're all essentially building a main board that uh, you all interact with on that board. So uh, you start from your home planet and then you're you're discovering planets so you can expand out. It's essentially kind of like the fog of war where you're, if, as you discover planets, you're opening up new sections of the board where you can go and have encounters where you attack and, and do missions. So it's uh, really like a expandable game that has no limit to the amount of the board. Cool. So it can go down further than the, because on, on the game on your Kickstarter page, it looks like it covers two rows. It can go further than those two rows? Yes, yeah. D depending on where you choose to place the planets that you've discovered. So if you're looking on the Kickstarter page, there's uh, columns one through six. And you could just put your planets all in the six column and just make this really long galaxy. And then it's it, it, as, as you go down in the rows, it takes more fuel, so more resources to move around. So it kind of self-limits you, but you could, if you wanted to, build this extremely lopsided galaxy. So it's really up to you. Cool, man. Then was this your idea or her idea or both of y'all's idea? Yeah, this was primary, primarily Carla's idea. So she came up with the idea by after we were playing a game called uh, Valeria Card Kingdoms by Daily Magic Games that uses the Machi Koro type of uh, um, roll dice mechanic in a different kind of way and we we're like oh well we would really like to do something that's similar to that but expands on it using these different player powers these hidden traits and it kind of morphed into this game that's not really similar to any other game uh, so it, it's been really fun we've uh, been working on this game for about a year uh, came up with the idea during our first kickstarter campaign for our first game super hack override and we've been massaging it and kind of threw it down onto uh, note cards uh, in, around the December time frame last year and played it around a lot. Uh, we, we decided to cut like half the resources. So now there's only four resources. There used to be eight because we said, oh, it got really complicated. But it's been really fun kind of massaging this game into something that pretty much every playtester that we play with loves the game and has a great time with. You said you came up with this during your last, last Kickstarter. Does that mean you guys are already formulating your next game during this Kickstarter? Yes. In fact, so we were, we've were we been thinking about this game. So right now we've got some other ideas uh, um, jiggling around in our brains. Uh, so Carla came up with this interesting idea for a uh, abstract color-based game that's similar to Quirkle, if anybody's played that, where you are matching different uh, symbols and shapes and we thought we could theme that into a, like a garden based theme so you're building this garden so you want to put the flowers in a certain way uh, so we, we've we've got that idea roaming around and we also have another space idea uh, called observance where you are observing the stars and discovering new constellations uh, so we, we're not sure which one is going to come next at this point but we're, we're so excited about both of those if I recall this one um, that you currently work the Kickstarter that's currently going on, it funded pretty quick, didn't it, if I recall correctly? Yes, it funded in about uh, 27 hours, but we're not counting. Um, and <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Um, and we're still working on some awesome stretch goals. I said one to four players, and I went over the backstory for the four different species. We've got birds, dinosaurs, uh, mammoths, and um, explorers, which are a very funky species that really have no analog. Um, to us uh, but our next stretch goal that we're working on right now if we get to our uh, next stretch goal we'll add a fifth player ex for for that the game works uh, pretty well at five players so we've been we've been testing that pretty uh, regularly over the last couple of months and, and think that it could probably get up to five players really easily uh, so we're excited about that and if Everyone wants to check out. I've, I I didn't say the name of the species that we've got, and we we wanted to stay away from humanoids. So it's a, a alien game where there's alien species, and it's all kind of animals. Uh, so if you have any good names for the species, the Kickstarter backers are actually going to select the name for the different species, 
at the uh, towards the end of the campaign uh, around the October nineteenth time frame. So we're we're so excited about that finally getting names for the species we've been calling the birds and the dinosaurs. Although they don't have names, none of them. Yep, they don't have names yet uh, because we're not very clever with coming up with names, and we find that the community out there is extremely clever with coming up with some awesome names. So if they go to our Facebook page, which uh, facebook.com slash weirdgiraffegames, uh, they can add some names to our comments of our... our we've been k- keeping track of all the different names that people have been coming up with. And then the Kickstarter backers are going to vote on their the best name. I think we're going to give them a top three to vote on. Oh, cool. And then this, this would be like a democracy. Whoever, whatever ones get the top three or not, will be the ones that end up with it. Exactly, yes. And uh, we're definitely going to attribute the names, uh, the people who came up with the names in the rulebook. And they're, so that's going to be the official name of the species based on what the Kickstarter backers decide. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I wanted to say they looked like dinosaurs, but I hadn't really researched as much. And especially when you were saying the story, they sounded like dinosaurs. And then I took a look at it, and they do. But you, like you said, you didn't name them yet, so that's kind of cool. So where did you come up with the idea? For where did you come up with the idea of the animals? Did it go with the giraffe or something? Yeah. So we, we uh, both Carla and I, really like animals. In fact, we we named our company uh, Weird Giraffe Games uh, after a okapi. Uh, do you know what an okapi is? Um, I remember um, I listened to the to Carla's interview with um, I want to say um, I heard her talking to Richard on We're Not Wizards. I think that's where I heard her. I don't remember, but yeah, up for anybody who hasn't heard. Yeah, definitely. If you're out there and you uh, Google, if you're not driving, uh, Google yeah. an Okapi, O K A P I. It's a very weird looking giraffe. And so we wanted to go, originally we named our, our, our um, company Okapi Games. So my name is Nick Kopp and Carla and is Carla Kopp. And we wanted to do a play on our last name, O-K-O-P-P-I uh, Games. And nobody got it because nobody knows what an Okapi is. They've got like three of them. I think there's two in the San Diego Zoo and there's three over at uh, the uh, Disney World uh, uh, Animal Kingdom. Um, but nobody knows what an okapi is, uh, so we said uh, nobody's going to get the joke. So let's just call it weird giraffe games because it's kind of a weird giraffe, and people know what that is. But we love animals, and we we really we took the idea to uh, get away from humanoids. We thought if there's actually aliens out there, they're probably not going to look anything like us, but they may look like the animals that we've we've got out there. So we've got birds we've got uh, a dinosaur we think that's what happened to the dinosaurs they all just left and became spacefaring uh, we've got woolly mammoths and then this very weird and wacky explorer kind of looking guy we don't even know what kind of animal he is but he's uh, definitely different oh well cool and uh, yeah the old copy i'm not sure what to think it looks like a part zebra part deer or something or maybe an anteater or what would you guys classify it as yeah, I think it's technically the only living relative of the giraffe in terms of scientifically speaking. Uh, so it, it, it is technically like a miniature giraffe, I guess, crossed with a zebra. It does. It has like stripes on it and then like a long neck. Um, I think it's about six or seven feet tall. So it's not super tall, but it's a really cool looking animal. Well, she, just, she was just looking up something that dealt with your name and that's what she found? or. Yeah, so we uh, um, we've always liked animals. We had a, a uh, dinosaur themed wedding. Uh, it was amazing. Um, it, we still have the uh, dinosaur um, pinata still sitting on our mantle from from that. Uh, and for some reason, we came across the okapi, and we thought it was ridiculously funny to make it play on our last name, cop. And so I just it all just came from there. It was fun. Cool, cool. Yeah, it looks like they might have a long tongue too. Cool. Look at that. Cool. And so I'm intrigued by this whole dinosaur wedding. I've never heard of that. And you didn't break the the um, pinata. Wasn't broken. Yeah. No, we didn't break the pinata. We ended up not actually uh, u- using that. It was kind of just out. Um, but we ended up having little. Um, so Carla has been pretty uh, active with the. Uh, the craft community and she um, on Etsy and so she worked with an artist on Etsy to get two uh, of those cake toppers for our wedding 
that were dinosaurs, but also dressed up in like wedding clothes. <laughs> it was it was ridiculously adorable. It was awesome. Well, cool, man. So do you have like a dinosaur tuxedo, or did you guys have to do anything with that? Or just- we did uh, like a regular. Uh, just a regular tuxedo and dress. We didn't go that crazy, but we did have dinosaur masks. So we had uh, a lot of pictures taken with the dinosaur masks on. Cool. That, yeah, that's wow. Well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So have you guys been to? Um, we don't live there anymore, but we used to live in Utah, and they have like a um, what is it? Uh, dinosaur Land or whatnot. I forget what it's called, but. Yeah, no, no, we've never been to there, um, but we did recently in about May, I think it was, we had the opportunity to go to Denver, and we saw the dinosaur trail where they have the d- dino footprints on the side of a mountain uh, by the road, and then we stayed in the official Best Western Dinosaur Hotel in Denver, Colorado, and that was amazing. They had um, bones in the lobby. Everything was dinosaur themed. They ha- it was basically a museum in the lobby of the hotel. It was it was just the best thing that we can ask for. Being dinosaur fanatics. Well, there you go. You have to check out. I believe it's in Vernal. Now that I think of it, it's in or around Vernal, Utah, and it's like di- I forget exactly what it's called. Something done with dinosaurs. Yeah, definitely. I think Carla had the opportunity to come out to Salt Lake City recently, but I don't think she got to go there. I, I don't even know if we knew about it. We probably should have looked it up, and she probably would have gone had we known about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where it is. Um, cool, cool being So, um, per se, somebody wasn't listening to, well, per se, they fell asleep at the road or whatnot, and they just suddenly got jolted away. It wouldn't be because of you or your game. It's probably because they're tired of... Wake up! <laughs> But why should they take a chance on Stellar Leap, especially with all the other great games they have on Kickstarter? Oh, yeah. There's uh, so many great games out there, and we've been finding that, um, man, it's just been really... I think there's been so many great games come out in the last just two months on Kickstarter that we've had trouble backing all of them. But Stellar Leap itself is a great introduction to the 4X uh, genre, so if you don't know what 4X is, it's think about games like uh, Risk or Scythe, um, where you're exploring. So the, the different X's are exploring of, of the galaxy, expanding your uh, population, your players, exploiting the land for resources, and exterminating or attacking your opponents. Uh, so this has all of those mechanics that in those games that usually take... Uh, four to six hours to play because you have to explore everything and you do those kind of in in a uh, group Um, but it's got all of those mechanics in this game that plays into about an hour so it's a really great introduction to that mechanic so if you've never played 4x before if you heard about it and you say I want to try that but I don't want to play for six hours uh, this game is is great for that it also takes that Machi Koro dice rolling and, and adds some variable player powers that really bring a lot to uh, that mitigate the problem of dice rolling so uh, there's there's some luck in this game but it's uh, primarily strategy so it's really strategic really thinking Um, and it also has some great player interaction it's got this mechanic called overpopulation Uh, so if if you guys if you see a good planet and you want to go get resources from that planet and then all the other species and players want, want to go get resources from that planet, the planet actually ends up generating less resources because it's overpopulated. So it, you can use that mechanic to subtly play around with uh, everybody at the table to mitigate what they want to be doing um, and kind of thwart their plans. Um, so it's, it's kind of, so if you think about the Star Trek exploring the galaxy kind of, um, dealing with some problems as they come up, it's that kind of feel in a in a game that plays a, in about an hour. Oh wow, cool! Yeah, that overpopulation. That sounds kind of cool. So you can thwart people's plans. Um, that's pretty cool. Exactly. Yeah, and it, and it it does it gets fun because uh, when you're using your player power uh, and it's your turn and you can roll the dice and you can manipulate the dice, it's been. 
really uh, a surprise and an interesting player interaction where players are actually campaigning for you to change the dice in a way that benefits not only you but also them. So that's been a really fun player interaction mechanic that we didn't even actually see coming and we we experienced it first during playtesting and we thought, wow, this is amazing. Let's see here. So yeah, um, yeah. So if you're driving right now, right now, like you said, you don't want to do this when you're driving. But I'll make sure I leave the links in um, the show notes so they can know where to go to back the the campaign and get, so they can get Star Leap. Um, I know you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, but when if people somebody back Star Leap, when should they anticipate getting the game? Uh, so we anticipate delivering in July of uh, 2018. So we're under promising and we hopefully over deliver. Um, we all of the game is complete. Uh, we're just pulling together the final touches on the art. Our artist uh, Tyler Harris has been diligently working in the background during this Kickstarter on all of the art, and he's putting that final touches on the different planets to make sure they all look pretty unique and, and good. And uh, we're hopefully going to have this thing in manufacturing uh, by the end of the year or early next year. And we're anticipating that in between there is the Chinese New Year, where Ch all of China and all the manufacturing shuts down for about a month. And my cats are knocking the game off the table. All right. Hopefully that woke up somebody uh, who's driving. There you go. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we hope to get the game out in July of 2018. I think that's definitely a reasonable um, promise because we've got some experience with our first Kickstarter. This is our second one. We, we know what we're doing now, um, and so hopefully they can. We'll get it in their hands by 28 uh, July 2018. Cool, cool. That's exciting. So let's see here. Yeah. So it sounds like you listened to some of our podcasts. The next portion of our podcast is called. Adventures in application acquisition where we talk about an application be it cell phone or tablet or video game or computer application um, It doesn't have to be related to board games. We a while back ago We had somebody who talked about travel somebody who really liked um, Google Drive or whatnot. Is there an application that you use a lot of you or Carla? Yes, uh, we, we definitely are fans of uh, organization and uh, keeping us uh, motivated. So Carla has been using an application called Todoist. Have you heard of that one yet? I haven't. It sounds a lot like the one my wife uses and that I need to start using again. I forget what the name of it is though, like um, where you're trying to level up your life, like you do different tasks and get different points. But can you tell, what can you tell us about? You said Todoist? Exactly. It's gamification. It is uh, Todoist, kind of like to-do list, but without a L and put it all together. Um, and it's a uh, to-do list application that we use uh, for Weird Giraffe games. And the best part is is that you can have collaborated to-do lists. So if Carla thinks of something that I need to be doing, she can just put it right in the app and assign that task to me. And whenever I get around to it, I can swipe it to, to complete it. And then Carla can see that I've completed it. Uh, so we, we uh, can organize everything and we can assign tasks back and forth to each other and have groupings of tasks. So we have a manufacturing task list and we have a Kickstarter task list and a Gen Con task list. Uh, so we can group everything together. And so that's really important to keep motivated is to have that list that you look at and you, you base your life around. Uh, so when we wake up, we're taking a look at that list and making sure we've got everything on there that we're doing. And when we go to sleep, we're organizing and make sure we've got everything uh, done that we've completed. And it essentially, um, it does, it gives you points and it gives you a score and it tells you how good you're doing with keeping up with your to-do list. And I love that aspect. And so we've got the professional version because so it allows you to go back and look at the uh, tasks that you've done and completed and see, hey, look, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. And it gives you a score about uh, what you've done last week versus this week. And you could see, oh, I wasn't as productive as I was last week, so I have to add more tasks to do. Well, so you talk a professional. Is there different grades? And if so, is there different costs? Uh, yes, so there is a the free version of the app has a enough functionality to live. We actually just upgraded to the professional version because the only difference is with the professional is you can go back and see those tasks that you've completed a lot easier, and it gives you graphs 
and charts about all of your performance and that's something that we want to look at because it makes us feel good when we're doing uh, better than we did last week cool, cool. do you know what the cost is for the professional I think it's about ten dollars a month I think not sure. I kind of just gave Carla the uh, company card and, and said, just buy it. Oh, cool, cool. There you go. Cool, cool. So um, if you guys own the rights to to do this, um, what would be one thing you would do to improve it or make it better? Oh, I would make the uh, all the stuff that we want as part of the free version so we didn't have to pay for it. I think that would be great. But I guess that makes sense because they need to make some money, so... Um, but like we like seeing the graphs um, and all the stuff that we've completed last week and how we, we are the amount of change of our tasks that we've completed over the course of weeks goes. Um, that would be awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to look and check that out. Um, is that available both on Android and iOS? Do you know? Yes, it is available uh, on both Android and iOS. Cool, yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out and let my viewers know. Hopefully they'll, they'll like that. Um, cool, yeah, we really wanted to thank you for coming on Getting Geeky with us. Um, for Yeah, for coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us, Nick, tonight. Um, it might us coming to you guys' as hometown or trying to find you in some kind of dinosaur place or whatnot. Um, how would people go about uh, finding you online so they don't have to come stalk you in your hometown? Yeah, so come on out to Huntsville, Alabama. That's where we live. Um, we're uh, uh, Rocket City, USA. We uh, invented the space program here. And you can come out to our uh, board game nights on Tuesday at uh, Sugar Bell Bakery. Uh, but if you don't want to do that or you live far away, uh, you can find us on the Internet. Uh, we're on Twitter at Weird Giraffes. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash weird giraffe games. Uh, we've got a website, weird giraffe games.com. And you can find Stellar Leap in the uh, Kickstarter that's live until October 19th and get that uh, exclusive promo card or exclusive planet that uh, n was designed by Nolan Nasser on um, the Kickstarter by going to stellar leap.com. So Stellar Leap. Uh, with a dash in between Stellar and Leap. Cool, cool things. Um, yeah, so once again, thanks for coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. And it sounds like you got an open invite, anybody listening to, uh, what was the name of the bakery again? Yeah, uh, Sugar Bell Bakery on Jordan Lane in Huntsville, Alabama. Anybody's listening, yeah, contact us on social media if you want to uh, join us. Uh, every uh, second and fourth Tuesday, we host a game night for the community, and everybody gets together, and we have this massive collection of board games that we bring out to the um, the, the bakery, and everybody can get a cupcake, and then they can pr play board games for free. Because we love playing new board games, and we constantly are buying new Kickstarter board games. That's the best part. It's kind of like Christmas for grown-ups, because you invest in a Kickstarter, and then it shows up maybe in six to nine months, and you forgot that you backed it. And it's like, oh, I'll, thank you uh, for this uh, present uh, past me. Uh, so we go out and bring those Kickstarter games that we've backed in, to this game night, and we play them. And that's a great way to learn how to... Uh, do new mechanics is to constantly be playing new board games. Uh, so come on out to Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, what are some, um, have you guys gotten any Kickstarter games recently that you brought to the table? Yes, we just got Ian Zhang's Constellations. It just came in the mail. Uh, we're excited to start playing that one. Um, what else is around here? We just played um, a, call, a game called... Uh, Underlings of Underwing, or under some like that. Underwing, Underlings of Underwing. It's a color-based, a color theory dragon game, where you are hatching dragons using colors, and it's pretty interesting. I, I like some of the mechanics in the game. I think there's some faults in the game, but it's been. Uh, it's been pretty fun to watch, to look at, and, and the art in the game is is really amazing. Cool, cool. And is there anything you recently backed that you want to forget about, and hopefully it'll show up in the next nine months? Yeah, I, I think Dinosaur Island is coming out soon. We're excited about that one. We basically back every dinosaur game on Kickstarter that we can get 
Um, one day we'll create a dinosaur game, I think. Um, that one's definitely coming out. And then Dinogenics, Dinosaur Park Management. You're basically building Jurassic Park. That one's exciting. I, I'm excited for that one. That's coming out. Cool, cool beans. Well, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to keep you all night. Um, but, yeah, we love. We thank you for coming on Getting Geeky with Gamerly. We really appreciate it, Nick. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I had a blast on, on here, and I'm super excited to uh, keep listening to the podcast. I think you're doing a great job. I've listened to some of the podcasts, and I've, I've definitely <laughs> added this one to my podcast app now. Well, I appreciate that. Um, sorry, one more quick thing, because I haven't, don't get a chance to ask this. And like A lot of times, people have never even heard of it or whatnot um, that come on the show or whatnot. Um, I'm a really big fan of constructive criticism. What is one thing you think we could do better on Getting Geeky with Game Relief? One thing that you can do better. So on Downcast, my app, it was really hard to find your podcast. So I'm not sure if that's something to do with what you guys are doing with the background. Uh, so if I search for Game Relief on my on my uh, podcaster app that I use, which is called Downcaster, um, I don't think it comes up. Yeah. So I'm going to have to actually do some work <laughs> to get you into this podcast app. Uh, yeah, it's not even on there. I think it's something to do with the uh, feed. So I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I know that they've done some. There's an RSS feed if you submit it to the Apple iTunes store somehow. You could uh, get yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, it goes to iTunes and whatnot. And um, I know somebody, um, uh, somebody I recently had on. Um, they had a trouble finding it on Pocket Cast. For some reason, it was all one word: getting geeky with game relief without any spaces. So I don't know. But you said it's Downcaster. Yeah, Downcaster, it, and I guess it's probably the same problem that the that uh, folks were having. Oh, yeah, I can look at that and see what we can do to get on there if we're not on there. Cool. Yeah, I really appreciate it. But yeah, thanks for coming on, and we'll. Um, so they have through the nineteenth to back this and get that exclusive planet. Yeah, they've got till October nineteenth is the last day for the Kickstarter, and that planet will only be uh, given out to the folks who back the Kickstarter. Uh, so it's it's very exclusive. Cool, cool beans. Yeah, well, we'll let you go for real this time, but thanks a lot, Nick. All right, thanks for having no me. Problem. Unfortunately, it's just me tonight on Kickstarter Corner, but welcome to Kickstarter Corner anyway. We have a couple of great games to bring to you or to tell you about. First off, we have Space Fighter, tabletop space fighting game in space. Space Fighter is a two-player, space-themed tabletop strategy game with 30 mini games I believe it says here and it looks really cool the dice remind me of similar dice that you get like in smash up or whatnot they have different things on them one of them is blowing up what who wants more who would want more than blowing up on their dice that's cool and the board is cool plus it looks like it comes with some cool cool cards as well as minis and whatnot there's lots of cool stuff in the box so go ahead and give them a check out on the Kickstarters. Hopefully you'll back it. Right now they're at $7,410 out of their $35,000 goal. This one goes through the 5th of November, so make sure you check them out on the Kickstarters. And then we got Frontier the Card Game, Become the Greatest Outlaw That Ever Lived, with this awesomely western card game by collecting notoriety and bounty. Yeehaw, I got it right this time. Now, this is a great game. We actually had the privilege of being able to play this. And also, Logan Chops, who has a great YouTube channel. You can check that out there. And I'll leave a link in the show notes. They're at $2,330 out of their goal of $3,000. They've got 12 days to go, ending on the 24th of October. Make sure you check it out as well. And then we've also got Angel Blood Publishing Presents, the tabletop RPG we all want. After 13 long years, Angel Blood the Tabletop RPG is ready to be unleashed on the masses. It's time for everyone to be a game changer. This was great. I was able to sit down with the creator of this, Aaron, and we had a lengthy discussion on what's so good about it. They got 27 days to go. It ends the 9th of November. They're at 2050 out of their $5,000 goal. Check them out over on the Kickstarter. And then Swords and Cells, Rewrite History. In 1000 AD, they've kind of finally edged up a little bit. They're almost at $12,000 out of $30,000. But they've only got, well, by the time you hear this, they'll have less than 23 hours to go. So check them out where you can, with Swords and Cells, 
It's an epic conquest and diplomacy game about leading your armies and fleets through medieval Europe in 1000 AD. Check them out on the Kickstarters. Two more games to come at you. We've got Crazy Commute, a bumper to bumper card game for three to five players. This is only $14 and free shipping to the US. Have you ever thought of the different characters that you have to fight against when you're going through rush hour? Well, somebody did do that and they made them into a card game. We've got Minotaurs, we've got uh, zombies, we've got vampires, all kinds of people and what you might be when you are on the road and what happens to you when you're on the road. They're at 287 out of $4,000 goal. They've got 20 days to go. Check them out on the Kickstarter before the 2nd of November and make sure that you pull off to the side of the road so you don't become one of the crazy commuters in that game. And then last but not least, we've got Record, a guitar themed strategy game for two to play four players. Become a tabletop guitar hero. I want to say that Michael Wright from Unfiltered Gamer just barely did a great live video of the playing of this and the game just looks amazing. You get the picks and different things. I'm excited about this one. I wish I had the money to back it. Well, check them out on the Kickstarters and don't forget to go check out our contest over on Monday's episode. And if this doesn't get to you in time, I apologize. Had a rough bit of a rough day. And yeah, what have you been keeping yourself busy with? Go ahead and send us an email and let us know. Let us know what you'd like to hear on the show. If you have a Kickstarter coming up and you want to hear it on the show, give us a call. Go ahead and give us an email at Getting Geeky. Well, that's our website, Getting Geeky at Game Relief is the name of our podcast. But send us an email at Game Relief at GameRelieveGo.com. And I think that is all, folks. That's all, folks. Now have a great day and a great night or whatever it is, wherever you're listening. And get geeky with Game Relief. Peace out. Game Relief out. Game Relief levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs>